In this lesson, we will talk about how homograph effectors can deform the objects, and uh, I think you will find this lesson to be very, very interesting. You notice here that I prepared some of the materials just to make things a little bit more interesting, so we don't look at that uh, really dull gray default material. And uh, let's create a simple plane so I can demonstrate the first principle. You load the uh, plane effector but uh, you will notice that i didn't create a cloner or any other generator from this list and uh, that is because you can use these effectors as deformers so if you make an effector a child of the polygon object you can actually use it to deform that uh, object and you will see now that in action here under this deformer tab that I was uh, deliberately skipping, we have an option for deformation. And uh, under this foldable menu, we have an option to turn off the deformation to affect the object. So the complete object, let's in fact uh, show that. So there are some things you will understand here. You see that by default, this plane effector will affect the Y position by giving it a 100 centimeters value in positive direction. So this guy will move 100 centimeters in Y if I enable this object mode. Let me just turn on uh, line shading. Maybe things will be a little bit more clearer. And uh, here comes a tiny obstacle you have to understand. If I change this to, let's say, polygon mode, you will see slightly different results. In fact, you will see a huge result change. So if I change this to point mode, you will see that these guys actually moved, relatively speaking, on another axis. So while in point mode, you will have to adjust the axis accordingly. So because it really doesn't use uh, the axis system of this object so you can change that by this transform space so for example setting it to object and it will do its thing properly so now this guy will actually work or since i suggest you stay in this relative node we'll simply change the value and in this case this should be z so you really don't have to bang your head about uh, which of these axes will work uh, simply enough for you to know that one of them will move this guy where you want it. If you want a different kind of control, then you will have to explore this transform mode and transform space a little bit more in detail. Now, apparently, you really cannot see any deformation going on, simply because we told this guy to move it 100 centimeters and we told all points if you want to constrain the effect you will have to use a fall off so let's use maybe a box fall off and now things will become much more clearer now the effector is only deforming points inside the fall off zone and it's actually deforming the object so now this fall off guy will probably make more sense you can see this is without a smooth transition so it creates a really abrupt plateau and uh, bit fall off it's really soft and uh, and uh, somewhat smooth you will have to turn off this clamp guy to see some of the effects you will possibly load with the spline here so let's maybe load a cosine spline and uh, you'll see if i turn off this clamp notice a slightly different results and uh, of course you can animate this i hope that uh, you understand this now there is a difference i hope you can see it in the way that it animates so if it is clamped it will pretty much generally give you a more uh, softer and uh, uniform results as opposed to this guy when it's turned off it can be somewhat a little bit of uh, unwanted motion so can really snap widely or stuff like that. So let's actually reset this. 
So this can be useful in many ways. Of course, you can enter a negative value here and uh, that's under fall of uh, actually clamp. You will see the difference now. It will close this uh, gap, so to speak. So you have a really nice uh, results. And of course, spline mapping will work. So you can in real time deform your object, which is actually really great. You can scale this effector and create maybe interesting results. The great thing about this follow-up is uh, that you can use polygon object or even uh, a spline for your deformation. So let me just delete this guy. Actually, I have an idea and uh, it can be really useful. So let's create a landscape object. We will convert it. And uh, this is really a common problem where you want to create, let's say, a canyon in your terrain or something like that. And I really want to show you a simple way to do that. The first thing is uh, I will actually go to my top mode and uh, let's draw a simple spline. So let's say that this is uh, maybe our river. I'll go to the front view and uh, since I want to project this guy, I'll pull it just a little bit upwards, go back to my top view and uh, use this uh, new fancy project object option here under character commands menu. And I will hit this little guy which will give me some options and the default option is points to surface. So let's hit OK. Now this spline will be simply projected to this surface. Now let's create the same plane effector we had. So in this case the repetition will help you get accustomed to using this effector. So we will use deformation in point mode. And we'll see things go a little bit crazy. And the reason for it is uh, that this parameter is really telling those points to move in that direction. So Let's actually put zero here and uh, use the correct uh, axis. So let's go with a smaller value in this case. So let's say like something like 10 or maybe in the negative value because we want to create the indentation, the riverbed. So pretty much the same thing under fall off. We will load maybe a box guy. So you can see it really deforms that surface. But instead of box, we will use this source. So now we will get uh, source link slot and this is where I will drop my spline. So watch what happens after that. You can see that it really created the indentation according to that spline. Let's uh, actually increase this maybe to 20. It will be a little bit more obvious and uh, maybe we could even use a material for that so it's uh, much more easier to see. Now under this fall of guy, there is a sample detail, which really means uh, how coarse or how correct the sampling will be. So I generally put this to 100% because uh, it is really not intensive in terms of uh, processing power. So it can be at 100% all the time. And this guy here is simply the distance from which the points will be sampled and uh, will affect the surface beneath. So if I increase that, the gap will be wider. And accordingly, if I decrease that, uh, the gap will be smaller. So you can really play with this value. Let's actually create a really deep canyon, something like this. So the benefit of this is that uh, those deformations are really non-destructible. So if you select your spline or let's say a spline point, these things still work and that is absolutely great about homograph. Let's uh, maybe put this to minus 50. So it's some sort of a reasonable value or our polygons will become really elongated here. Now you could possibly think that uh, you're limited only to a single effector, but in fact you can stack a million of them under objects and they will all work combined same works for applying effectors to cloners so a lot of power and flexibility there let me in fact show you so 
for example let's say that we copy this guy and uh, instead of using our source link here so we don't want to use a spline we will use maybe a, let's say a sphere and you will see that it will also deform this object but um, we can go a step further let's actually scale this guy down and uh, well, i will show you how to create something really nice that can be used in when creating uh, medical animations such as uh, maybe uh, something going through the blood vessel or something like that so now let's align this guy this plane effector to a spline and we can align it to the same spline so now we have uh, a little bit more elaborate setup so now this guy will deform according to the spline path so it will add to existing deformation and uh, of course the setup is non-destructive so if i move this guy you will see that this fall off is following so that is one concept you have to understand about mograph everything is uh, pretty much parametric so things tend to be non-destructible and that is the real power and opens a lot of possibilities now let's uh, get rid of all these guys maybe we will use something different for the next effector we will explain so let's create a plane object we'll also convert it and uh, we give it this uh, nice soft pink material i think it's uh, really nice so we'll now add a formula effector which is really oriented for people that uh, are really good with mathematics and understand things with uh, like a sine wave cosine wave and stuff like that but actually it's not really that difficult to understand that so here instead of uh, checkboxes that you have in uh, other effectors you will simply enter the mathematical formula and uh, sina 4 d has a appendix in the documentation where you can find all that functions explained what each of them does so here under help menu under appendix for formula you can see that uh, we have a bunch of options so it looks scary at first glance but actually it's not that scary as i will show you now so let's first enable deformation for our guy and uh, we'll see that something will immediately happen once i switch to point mode and uh, i generally suggest that you use this point mode instead of polygon mode because it will give you pretty much always better results let's uh, here under parameter keep it simple as we can and we will turn off the scale and uh, maybe i would rather want this guy to be in uh, z so let's say 50 in z and uh, now the deformation is uh, much more easier to understand so now this guy will deform this plane 50 centimeters in point mode so it will deform the points according to this formula here you have some variables here so we will not go really in depth with this so this guy this formula effector has a temporal component to it so it really understands time so if i press play you will see a wave like motion and um, this can be a little bit difficult for people that are not really technically oriented so for example here we have uh, degrees let's instead of uh, 360 enter maybe 45 so you can see the difference in the behavior this is a project time so if you lower this things will be slower and of course if you increase this uh, things will be faster we can go with 10 so you can see the result uh, real time let me stop this go back and uh, here are some variables that are explained and uh, i really suggest if you want to play with this formula effector to really take a look at the appendix of a formula so you can play with the values uh, and uh, get results that you need so maybe just to clarify this formula a bit is uh, that this first guy this sin simply means a sine wave this id is the id of the clone or the component and uh, of course the count 
T stands for time. So I really don't want to bug you with all that uh, technical stuff. So maybe if we enter here a cosine, so COS and maybe with an addition of H, so it's a uh, hyperbolicus. I really hope I pronounced that correctly because I won't do it twice. And uh, let's hit play and we will have a different result. So it's a really good idea to understand these mathematical functions and operators to use this uh, guy effectively. So I hope that makes sense. And this formula effector in right hands can really produce spectacular results. So let's delete it and uh, I'll show you something that is much easier to understand and you will be really happy about it. So let me load a shader effector here. So although this guy is a complex and scary, when used in this constellation is basically really simple. So so I will make it a child of the plane object, exactly the same as for every effector. And I will load a custom shader here. So let's load uh, maybe gradient and nothing will happen unless we enable the point deformation. So here under parameter, scaling the points really has no effect because uh, the principle of scaling the points is uh, really a logical contradiction. So let's disable scale, but position of the points is uh, completely another story. So let's uh, maybe drag this guy upwards. I'll give it simply a hundred centimeters value. And you can see that this guy now deformed the points according to this gradient here. And just to prove it, let's do something like this. You see how it really corresponds to this shader so maybe inversion will give you another insight what is possible this could also vividly explain this 2d v option so it will happen in another direction and uh, i'm showing you all this because with this guy it's simply possible to deform any object with a shader and that's uh, very very powerful so let me demonstrate that with a couple of really great examples and maybe a good idea would be to, let's clear this for now, so we get a basic uh, state without deformation. And uh, I think I will subdivide this plane a few times, maybe once, maybe just once more. So we have a rather dense geometry that could really show the effect of the shader we will load. And in case you didn't know by now, in Cina 4D, Many shaders have a temporal component to them, so let's maybe load a, let's say, a cyclone shader. Okay, I think the screen is cut off a little bit down, but uh, that's okay. And uh, we'll change this uh, Z value to something more acceptable, let's say 10 centimeters. And if I hit play, watch the magic. You really also enable Grad shading mode so we don't have those lines in the viewport and uh, how about this this is really awesome imagine something like this on a character skin or you can really have fun with this so let me show you another one so maybe we could uh, have fun with uh, let's say a fire shader too say something like this so in this case, if this thing happens, so you have some sort of uh, really unwanted results, really turn off tiling if there is such option. So you really have uh, nice deformations on that plane. And this is the actual deformation. So the actual geometry is being deformed. That is uh, really great. So let's go back. Uh, maybe we could load another one just for fun because they're really fun to work with. So let's try this sunburst. I think you cannot see that because the video is uh, cut off, but uh, trust me, there is the sunburst shader. Let's hit play and uh, we could even go one more subdivision, okay, like this. And if you have uh, these uh, artifacts in the shader, you can really utilize this blurring. So things will be a little bit better and uh, 
This is the reason I was telling you that uh, it is really essential to understand the material system. It is really important for you to understand uh, many things, insights in Afrodi before getting to know MoGraph and its amazing capabilities. So let's uh, maybe load a noise shader because those guys also have a temporal component but it's uh, a little bit hidden so this animation speed if i enter maybe one here will now make sense so any noise type or any of these guys of procedural shaders in cinema 4d that has this setting can be animated so that is uh, pretty much awesome so also you can limit that behavior just to a certain area. So let's say to a sphere. So how about that? That is absolutely great. I really cannot begin to tell you how amazed I am by possibilities of Mogra. It is simply fantastic. Now, I want to show you a few more effectors, but uh, I think uh, it is much better idea for me to create a clone setup rather than... Uh, trying to explain these guys on uh, in this uh, deforming mode because I think that would be a little bit too complicated so for example if you play with this slice you can have uh, different results but that guy has to be rotated so let's give it a shot like this by 90 degrees and uh, really slice off this uh, well okay so we pretty much have some sort of a uh, Pac-Man here or stuff like that, but uh, let's not waste time with it. I will create a simple clone setup. So let's create maybe a simple cube like this. We'll scale it down because it's simply too big for my taste. So something like this, 20%. I will alt click the cloner so it becomes the parent of this guy. Let's go with 10 and uh, would rather go in the X direction. So let's maybe set 50 here like this and uh, just for fun we will give it maybe this uh, let's go with the blue color in this case so let me show you another effector which is really easily understandable on this kind of setup so i will load a step effector so once loaded we also enable this rare shading line so you can actually see the volume of each cube and here under step effector, which is very powerful, the scale is telling clones simply to increase themselves in size according to this spline. So let's maybe go rather with the position. So now, if I enter maybe 100 here, I'm saying this guy, and you can clearly see the spline shape here. So they will progressively in step mode increase their position we can also enable scale but i will use a lower value so every single of these guys will become bigger with each step i hope that makes sense and uh, all that will happen according to this spline so if i play with this you can see i'm changing the gradient guy and you can also go maybe with uh, something like this so now these guys here I just emphasize that these guys here which are on the top position on this spline graph will become bigger of course uh, we could maybe add a little bit more gap to these guys so this step effector is incredibly powerful and can create really great results and can really be used in uh, architectural modeling so you can simply create any type of stairs and uh, stuff like that in color mode if uh, you're interested in color mode this guy will simply use a gradient to deform the clone so let's actually get rid of this point so we'll just uh, select it and delete it so now and i will get rid of the material because you will be able to see that gradient now since this guy is now going from completely black to completely white so black is uh, zero of this value zero percent and 
this guy here white is 100% of this value so also works with mapping through this plan that is uh, really clear in this example this step effector is really great we will use it in later lessons also now let's uh, get rid of this all and uh, we will take a look at uh, another effector and uh, in this case let's uh, explain this time effector i would rather skip this uh, coffee and python effector because i think coding and uh, usage of code in effectors is a little bit beyond of the scope of this lesson and it's really appropriate for project training so let's go with our time effector and uh, let's create maybe a torus i will scale it down also and uh, i will put it under a cloner so once again holding the old key and hitting the cloner and uh, I'll create just one clone for now because I want to show you what this effector does. And in fact, it's very simple. So first thing you have to do and uh, not forget or nothing will happen. The effector has to be loaded here in the effector tab. So now we'll take a look at uh, some options here. And uh, basically we have all the same options we have for other effectors. So follow, deformer and parameter now since this is a time effector it works with time so if i hit play it will actually spin this object by 90 degrees per second so let's actually change this to maybe let's go 90 here so it will do 90 degrees in a second let me just uh, show you that my project settings are 30 frames so it will come to 90 degrees exactly at 30 frames so it's dependent on the project setting frame rate so that is really important don't forget that and uh, of course if you enable position and tell it to move five centimeters in uh, y in each second it will do so let's actually use maybe 50 so it will be more apparent so that is uh, really one great and very very useful effector okay, let's put this back and uh, also what is really great you can draw a spline and tell this guy to move over a spline with this spline effector so first we have to change this to object mode so now once i load a spline here I will get a bunch of clones. I will actually drop this to just one. Use the even distribution. So if I press play now, you will see that my object is spinning. But it's not really aligned to that spline and there is a bit of a problem. So here you can see it really, it's not conforming to that spline. It's really struggles between the setting in time effector and the settings in the cloner so what i want to do here now is i want to disable this uh, object mode and use a special effector for such cases and uh, there is a spline effector so now our object is freely floating and moving upwards we can actually Get rid of this rotation because it will make things much more clear we'll stop this go back and uh, although our cloner now is in the linear mode we can still use a spline effector so let me create it and this spline effector is now loaded as a second guy in our effectors tab of the cloner and this is really important the order of these guys is important so if the setup is not working as you expect and you are using multiple effectors there is a really good chance that uh, something is executed before something else and uh, you should correct that with the logical order of these guys i hope this makes sense so now here under my spline effector which has a little bit uh, 
different options. The fall off and deformer are the same. Parameters a little bit different, and we will maybe explain them a bit more in depth in later lessons. And here under Effector, we have options that are very similar to options you receive once you drop a spline into a cloner. And, uh, and the reason for it is uh, actually to give the ability to other MoGraph generators, among uh, other useful explanations, to have the ability to create parametric systems on spline. So let's not overcomplicate it and drop our spline here. So now what will happen, our guy will listen to our spline effector and adjust itself to this spline. And now you have all these options present. So you can offset the clone on the spline. You can really define the starting and the end position. And I think this would be much more easier if I created a bunch of these guys. And uh, maybe it's a good idea to scale them down so you can see things uh, better. You can maybe clamp them so they will not appear once again. They are simply offsetting from the starting point. You can define the starting point, you can define the end point, and we will talk about these uh, other settings in later lessons. So it also has a fall off, it has a deformer, and it has this parameter tab. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is simple. In my time effector, I will set this uh, rotation and let's leave it at this 90 degrees value. Now let's press play and nothing will happen even though this guy should tell these clones to rotate 90 degrees. The reason for it is here in the order of execution of these guys because this spline effector also affects the rotation so it simply is taking over the last one is taking over so effectively let me stop this for a moment it's a bit distracting so effectively he is the one responsible for the rotation now if i simply change the order so drop this time effector after the spline effector you will see the clones will be rotating and uh, this is very important concept for you to understand so make sure the order of execution is right of course now you can blend some of the values so let's for example you can play with this offset and the guys will still rotate it so this time effector didn't took over the position value so if i would enable this it would simply take over the complete control so be aware of that some of the things cannot be really blended seamlessly like this setup but uh, for this particular setup i would maybe use a cloner or even this uh, spline rep so it was really just a demonstration of uh, how the order of execution of effectors is important now i will show you just two more effectors and uh, we can then proceed to our next lesson but uh, let's just briefly take a look at those two so we'll get rid of this spline effector and time effector and also this spline and i'm left with these uh, guys here which are really gray and boring so we will give them maybe this uh, blue color so they're a little bit more interesting so maybe we'll also tune down this value so they are a little bit more closer together. I want to show you this uh, target effector which is uh, really simple to understand. Simply tells the clones where to look at relatively speaking. So you can pretty much move this guy and the clones will orient themselves according to where that effector is uh, positioned. Also, you can use a target object instead of this effector. So this effector can stay, let's say, in the center of the scene and you can use any other object as a target object. 
so the clones will look at it. What is useful, there are several target modes here. So, for example, you can enable this look at camera. So, no matter how you rotate your scene, no matter what you do, those clones will look always at the camera. And sometimes this is very, very useful. You can go back to a object target. This next node and previous node simply will align the clones according to previous and the next clone. I think that this uh, deformer and fall of tab really don't need any more explanation. It's pretty clear that uh, those things are common to all effectors. Now, interesting feature here is this repel guy. So if you enable it, you'll get the distance option. So now all these guys will simply try to stay away from that effector in this distance. So if you lower the distance, naturally the effect will occur later. So if it is really high, those guys will try to keep 100 centimeters distance of this effector. Of course, there is a strength value, so you can really tune down to whatever you like. Every single one of these uh, little generic setups that I'm showing you has uh, multiple practical applications. So let's maybe for this guy, imagine that you have a spaceship and a random asteroid field and uh, you really don't want to crash into the asteroid field. So you would use a bunch of rock objects for asteroids and uh, would use this target effector as a child of your ship with a big enough uh, radius or you can utilize this fall off and simply load the shape so the ship would simply avoid all asteroids by default so i think that is uh, clear enough so every single of these small setups has a practical application now let me show you just one more effector so i could even get rid of this completely and uh, let's get rid of this material and uh, I'll use a different object just to have some sort of uh, variety in this uh, simple examples. And let's use a capsule object. Maybe lower the segment count, 5 and 5, so it's not too dense. Scale it, and we will drop it under the cloner. But in this particular setup, I will use maybe a radial mode. Maybe space them a bit like this, let's say 10 guys, and uh, could even copy this capsule because I want to create a variation in color. So let me add a, maybe a red one and a blue one here. So do we want a blue or a red pill that reminds me of a certain movie? So let's actually create a simple animation here. Let's say that uh, we will animate the offset here so these guys will really rotate let's uh, give it a keyframe here with a control click on this guy and uh, let's go to frame 30 and uh, maybe set this to let's say 90 degrees so give it a keyframe like this and let's see what we have and i use the different colors just to be able to show you things a little bit more clearly and you will be able to identify the rotations a little bit better and the effect of the effector I'm about to load. So now with our cloner selected, I will add a delay effector. So now if I press play, you really won't be able to see anything unless this mode for this effector which also has this uh, parameter, deformer, fall off. The only difference is you cannot set values here. You can only affect position, scale and rotation. And uh, you will actually not be able to see anything in this mode if you don't have a fall off unless this is set to spring mode. So watch carefully. And uh, I really hope you can see this. So let's hit play. Look how those guys really react naturally maybe i will increase this to let's say something like 75 and it will be more apparent so there is really like a spring-like motion maybe 
just enable a, let's say a spherical fall off and uh, put it maybe here so the effect will be more apparent on a single guy so you will see the effect isolated so let's hit play and uh, you can clearly see what is uh, going on now i think this is really great for adding uh, secondary motion to your various clone animations and uh, there are also two more modes here so let's just hit play and they will be self-explained uh, in within that uh, follow so let's try with even so you can see how it really somewhat of uh, settles in and uh, it's very difficult to explain this effect maybe i will try this blend so you see it really gradually slows down to that uh, position so that's really cool imagine keyframing all that and uh, this delay effector is really really great and we will use it uh, throughout this training so let me stop this go back and i'm pretty sure we covered most of the effectors i think we only have uh, inheritance and uh, volume effector left so we will cover them later so in the next lesson we will talk about other mograph generating objects and you will see that they are really powerful and uh, that uh, they are a lot of fun to work with so let's leave our red and blue pills and uh, continue to our next lesson